We have a big problem on our hands, especially when we're over the age of 40 or 50. And it looks like one meal a day or two meal a day fasting might really come in as the practical solution for this. Now, the problem that we're facing is as we get older, we need more protein. We need to take in protein because it's going to allow us to maintain our muscle mass, which is very positively correlated with overall lifespan. But the big glaring issue is protein also spikes something called mTOR. And mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, mTOR in a lot of ways is very bad for longevity. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that when we are spiking mTOR as we get older, we're essentially encouraging dysfunctional cells to grow and dysfunctional mitochondria to grow. And we're encouraging a lot of things we don't want to encourage. So where does fasting come into play with this? Well, what we have to remember is that mTOR is still very critical. Now, there is this thing called proteostasis. Proteostasis is the balance of muscle or protein degradation and protein synthesis. And when we're young, our bodies have a lot of flexibility with this. They can really just kind of degrade the right amount of protein, synthesize the right amount of protein, and these communication systems are really working seamlessly. But as we get older, we start breaking down proteins and it's harder to synthesize, and that's why we need more protein. But when we have more protein, we also trigger other growth. So, if mTOR is still required to maintain muscle, then how do we spike our mTOR without potentially causing these other negative issues? The first thing I want to focus on is mitochondrial biogenesis and just mitochondrial dysfunction. The mitochondria is the energy powerhouse within our cell, right? Okay, well, the problem is as we get older, the mitochondria becomes more dysfunctional. And when a mitochondria becomes dysfunctional, it really leaks a lot of reactive oxygen species. It leaks a lot of, I don't want to say toxic stuff, but it releases electrons that are going out and causing damage. And then our body has to scavenge these. So these little power plants, when they start creating more power plants through mitochondrial biogenesis, then we end up having this out of control growth of inefficiency and dysfunction. And that's where we run into this issue. And if you look at a study that was published in the journal Nature, they found that by actually inhibiting mTOR, Okay, by refraining from protein consumption, you could actually block mitochondrial biogenesis. Now, normally mitochondrial biogenesis sounds like a really good thing, and usually it is in a younger person, but when you're already older and your mitochondria are dysfunctional, you don't want those mitochondria replicating or, or going through biogenesis in this case, right? Because then you end up with more dysfunctional mitochondria. Then there was another study that was published in Molecular and Cellular Biology that found that when you inhibit mTOR, it actually stimulates what's called mitophagy. Mitophagy is like autophagy specifically for the mitochondria. So the mitochondria can recycle and go through their whole, you know, recycling process, right? We want this proper like reformation, reallocation of proteins, and things like that. So what this is telling us is that when we are fasting, we are inhibiting mTOR because mTOR is pro-growth. And if we inhibit mTOR, we are stopping the growth, which means we are encouraging the mitochondria to recapsulate, reformulate, and take extra proteins from other mitochondria and combine them to make, us all, make them more efficient. And we are stopping the formation of new mitochondria. This is a very good thing, but it comes with a big problem. If we can't spike mTOR, how the heck are we going to maintain muscle? We've even seen in pharmaceutical situations when mTOR is inhibited, even with things like rapamycin, you encourage muscle wasting because you no longer have the signal to say build tissue. It's this delicate dance of I need to build tissue because I need to make sure I maintain muscle. Very important as we get older. I cannot overemphasize that, but we also need to make sure we don't have too much mTOR. This is where doing one meal a day or two meals a day type fasting, maybe three days a week or four days a week over age 50 could be huge because you still need to have adequate amounts of protein, but what you don't want to do is have it spaced throughout the course of the day.
Okay, so in this particular case, good quality protein during your eating window. I put a link down below for ButcherBox, by the way. They are an online meat delivery company that has really good grass-fed, grass-finished steaks. Like I'm talking some of the best ribeyes I've literally ever had, and their fillets are one of the only fillets my wife will eat. She is a very big steak snob, and their fillets are unreal. Okay, so that link is down below. It gets delivered right to your doorstep. They don't just have steaks, okay? They have, yes, grass-fed, grass-finished steak, but they also have poultry, they have chicken thigh, they have wild-caught cod, they have uh, sockeye salmon, which is delicious, they have scallops, they have grass-fed, grass-finished franks, they have all kinds of stuff. So that link is down below in the description, so make sure you check them out after this video because it's obviously very, very relevant because the quality of meat that you have when you are eating is exponentially important as well, okay? So I put that link down below, you gotta check them out. So the same study that I referenced in molecular and cellular biology was looking at mTOR and inhibiting mTOR, right? They found that acute spikes in mTOR were good for biogenesis, but chronic spikes in mTOR are what caused the problem, okay? So think about it like this. An acute spike is when you have a big controlled meal with a fair bit of protein in a consolidated period. That is an acute spike of mTOR. So think of mTOR like a switch that tells your body it's okay to build tissue, it's okay to build, and it's okay to repair. You want that switch flipped on from time to time. You don't want it flipped on all the time. So if you're eating three, four, five meals per day consistently grazing on protein, you're leaving that switch turned on all the time. And to put it into an extreme analogy, that's like saying, I wanna build muscle, so I wanna flip the muscle building switch. And then your body just builds muscle, and builds muscle, and builds muscle until you can't even do anything. You can't move, you have so much muscle, right? Who would ever really want that? It's because the switch is never turned off. Be careful what you wish for, right? So you wanna be able to turn that switch on and then turn it off, and turn it off hard. Because mTOR doesn't turn on 10%, 20%, 30%, 100%. It doesn't act like a dimmer switch. mTOR is either on or off. Okay, so if you go and you eat a little bit of protein, you're gonna turn on mTOR. If you go and you eat a lot of bit of protein, you're gonna turn on mTOR. So you might as well turn on mTOR in very acute situations. That's why things like one meal a day or two meals a day preferred, because that's more my strategy, two meals a day could be perfect when it comes down to mitigating these risks that come with aging. It allows you to get your protein in a consolidated period with two or so meals, making sure you're still getting you know, 100, 120 grams of protein or something on those days, but you're also still allowing for all this time period that you're fasting to not just spike mTOR a little bit, but completely crush it and turn it, turn it off. That way you're getting these benefits. Because think about what happens as we get older with proteins that start growing out of control. When things grow out of control, that enters the C word, right? No one really wants to deal with the C word, okay? We, we hate it, we don't want it. It's a disease that nobody wants to deal with and think about but it is all a product of things replicating and growing out of control. And mTOR is responsible for that. But we cannot turn a blind eye to the fact that we still need mTOR to maintain our muscle and to maintain who we are and to maintain hippocampal function with our memory and things like that. So this is exactly why as we get older, doing these kinds of strategies and consolidating our protein intake could be one of the most powerful things we can do. I've done other videos breaking all this down with mTOR and the balance there, because we can't just rain on mTOR, it's needed for muscle protein synthesis and for that proper proteostasis, but too much is not gonna be good. And I know I say eat more protein as you get older, but consolidate it and give yourself a break. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.